Hello everybody, thank you all so much for joining me here on YouTube. I know a lot of you all have probably followed me over from Instagram. If you have not yet seen my Instagram though, then please make sure you do so at the end of this video. It is at jumping.scooters, where I love posting a lot of educational videos, cute reels, and a lot of up-to-date posts. It is because of you all that has encouraged me to make this YouTube account here so that I can continue to spread education, care, and information on jumping spiders. Whether you are looking into them as a companion or you are just genuinely curious about these cute creatures, perhaps you need help with your arachnophobia or you want to learn more about them for when you find them out in the wild. Today we are going to be covering some general information about jumping spiders, their care, where to find them, whether that is outside or online, and also some answers to some commonly asked questions I receive on Instagram. Okay, let's get started. Jumping spiders, where are they? Jumping spiders are very common. If you have not seen one yet, then you just aren't looking hard enough. All jokes aside though, they truly are common. You can look online to see what species are commonly found in your area. They will be able to provide you with information on what they may look like, where they can be found in the wild, their care, and even what size they may grow to. When looking outside for your jumping spider, they're going to be under a little bit of a ledge, maybe up in a crack, or they like to sunbathe during the day. A lot of jumping spider parents have found their jumpers right in their backyard, and so can you. Jumping spider colors. Jumping spiders are primarily black, tan, brown, gray, but there are a little bit more exotic colors, ranging from some greens to even really bright oranges. Jumping spider size. Jumping spiders may be between two millimeters to almost 22 millimeters. Most jumping spiders though will be between five millimeters to 10 millimeters. For example, a lot of the jumping spiders that I find in my area are between four millimeters to eight millimeters in size, which is very small. What do jumping spiders eat? Jumping spiders will eat something that is about its size to also a little bit smaller than them, though they will attempt a larger prey. It just depends on how courageous that jumping spider is. They can eat about 1.5 times their size. When jumping spiders are very small or very young, they may eat something like fruit flies, some house flies, or some pinhead crickets. As they get a little bit older, or jumping spider species that are just larger, they will be able to eat crickets, some mealworms, or waxworms, for example. Jumping spider sight. The thing that separates jumping spiders from other spiders is their sight. It gives them the ability to explore their environment and travel. Their best vision comes from their two front facing eyes. Their other eyes around their head though are just for peripheral vision. Whenever something passes by a jumping spider, they would typically move their entire body in the direction of whatever captured their attention. We are gonna also be talking a little bit more about their sight when we go into their intelligence as well. Another thing that separates jumping spider from other spiders is their webs. They do not make webs like Charlotte Webb does, for example. They actually, most of them make nests. They use these nests whenever they molt or lay eggs or to actually just sleep in at night. A lot of times they will also use these nests just to hang out during the day. The only other webbing that a jumping spider will make is its lifeline web. This is a webbing that they keep behind them that trails behind them all the time so that in case they were to fall or jump off something that was too far of a distance, it won't harm them. Their intelligence. Jumping spiders are very intelligent. In fact, they are one of the most intelligent species of spiders on this planet. The most intelligent spider being the fringe jumping spider. Just because jumping spiders have the brain size of a poppy seed, that does not mean that they are not smart. Their intelligence also can be seen in the fact that they are very curious of us and observe us. They do not, however, have emotions or are able to bond or recognize anybody. This is a very argued fact though. Going back to what we had mentioned about their sight and also continuing with their intelligence, both of these play a very vital role in their hunting and exploring. It helps them to evaluate whether a prey is too large for them to hunt. It is also useful because they actually will mimic their prey. They are a type of species that will move back and forth to stalk their prey as well. They also use their sight and intelligence to measure whether or not a jump is too far for them or to just assess any type of risk. Jumping spider demeanor. Jumping spiders are generally very calm and docile by nature. They're not typically very aggressive, though you will get a standoffish one or a very shy one every now and then. And they would typically only reside to biting if they truly felt like their life was in absolute danger. If and when a jumping spider does bite you, it will hurt just like any other bite does from any other animal. 
It may be painful and have some irritation for a few days, and it also just depends on the allergies and individual sensitivities of the person who received the bite. I know it can be very alarming to receive a bite from any animal, but especially a jumping spider being so fragile, you want to make sure you're careful. Jumping spider lifespan. Jumping spiders can generally live between one to two years, though they have been known to live a little bit less than a year and also more than two years. The research on that fact is not very strong as it depends on a lot of different variables. Jumping spider enclosure and setup. For me, I keep my jumping spiders in my bedroom out of sight and away from guests. Humidity, temperature, types of food, enclosure size will all depend on the age and species of the jumping spider you are getting. A lot of the care information on the jumping spider can be found online or if you are purchasing from a breeder, a lot of it will be found in its description or in a separate care fact on their website. For their enclosures, you can use a lot of things you have around your house or you can also purchase enclosures online. There are a lot of sites like Etsy and Amazon that sell the perfect size for a jumping spider. Jumping spider enclosure size is typically around a cubic foot, but it will also depend on the age and the species of your jumping spider. If your jumping spider is a little bit smaller, it's going to need a smaller enclosure because it might not be able to find its food very well. If the jumping spider is a little bit older, then you're going to need to put it in a smaller enclosure as well as because whenever they reach their senior years, it's going to be harder for them to explore around, form their webs, and find their food. Jumping spider enclosures should never have something that open on the top. You're going to want to make sure that that opening is on the side, nowhere near the top. They love to make their nests at the top of their enclosure. So any single time you would open up the enclosure to get them out or to feed them or to mist, you could be potentially breaking their nest. Jumping spider enclosures may require some substrate depending on if you need a higher humidity or temperature. I like to use cocoa fiber and moss for my substrate, though it is not necessary at all. There are a lot of jumping spider parents that get away with no substrate, and that just requires them to mist a little bit more or maybe their humidity in their house is high enough anyways. You'll want to add some floral or other decorations in your enclosure. Not only does this look very nice, but it's also very beneficial to your jumping spider. It gives them some places to explore and also to hide in. Jumping spiders also need a lot of things on the sides of their enclosure, as whenever they're older, they're not going to be able to stick well to the side of the enclosure and they could slip and fall. Also mentioned before, jumping spiders really like hides. These are going to be little designated areas that you're hoping that your jumping spider makes a home in. As for the decor, you can find anything that's around your home. I like to use some floral or some vines I'm kind of not using anymore or I don't really like around the house. You can also find these things at the dollar store or you can also look online as there's a lot of Etsy sellers that already have pre-made spider enclosures for you, though I really do like doing DIY enclosures as it's very fun. You also want to make sure in their enclosure that you have ventilation on both sides or a few different sides because they do not like stagnant air. I will touch base on enclosures a little bit further in another video as I have an enclosure tutorial that you will be able to watch me create one of these enclosures from start to finish. Because jumping spiders are awake during the day and they sleep at night, it is very beneficial for their health that they have some light during the day. It helps them to stay active and to make sure they're on the right time schedule. You will want to mist the enclosure, but make sure you're misting very lightly and only on about one side of the enclosure. You may need to mist more frequently depending on the humidity and the temperature that your jumping spider may require. You'll be able to find these requirements on the care fact if you're getting it online or if you're finding one outside, then make sure to do a quick search on what their care might be as it could be a more tropical species. Misting is also very vital for their hydration as they will actually drink the droplets on the side of their enclosure. This is why I said lightly mist because make sure the droplets are not too large for them. Your enclosure will not need much cleaning. There's going to be a lot of webs that accumulate on the siding of your enclosure. Remember the lifeline webs? I do not like to remove those webs because it helps them stick to the walls easier. Especially whenever your jumping spider ages, it's going to need that webbing on the side in order to stick very well on parts that you don't have floral on. The only cleanup that I like to do in my enclosure is just making sure I'm removing any live or dead insects. You do not want any mold forming and live insects can be very fatal to your jumping spider if left unintended. Things like mealworms can turn into a beetle and those beetles can be very damaging to them, especially if they're in the middle of a molt or they're going to lay eggs. Mealworms also like to bury themselves into the substrate, so make sure you're dropping them into a feeder or handing them directly with tweezers. Once they're in the substrate, you may not realize until they turn into a beetle. Flies and fruit flies, on the other hand, they are very safe though. The only things I really don't recommend would be mealworms and like crickets, for example, being left in the enclosure. Crickets are known to also fight back, which is also not good for your jumping spider. 
You can find jumping spider foods in a lot of pet stores. You can order them online, or sometimes you can find some things around your home. Just please make sure they are free of insecticides, that you are 100% sure nobody used them around your house or inside your house. It does could be very fatal for your jumping spider. Typically, I will drop something in their feeder in the morning, and I'll make sure I remove it by the end of the day if it is not eaten. Just make sure, though, that whenever you're offing your jumping spider something with tweezers, that you're not annoying it or bugging it, as it could feel a little bit intimidated by the prey. Just keep it away from a distance, maybe wiggle it if the insect isn't moving, and see if your jumping spider looks towards it and starts to stalk it in a way. If you are planning on getting more than one jumping spider, just be very mindful, though, as they cannot be housed together. You will need separate enclosures for them. Jumping spiders can tend to be cannibalistic towards one another. They could fight or just be stressed out within vicinity of each other, or they could mate. Plus, if it is an unsuccessful mating, the female could eat the male. Molting. The period that a jumping spider will molt will be a lot more often as they're younger, and they typically won't last more than maybe a few hours to a couple of days. Though, as they get older, the intervals between them will get longer, and also the time that they're molting could take longer as well. It is very important that whenever your jumping spider is molting that you leave it alone and you give it its space. You may need to miss it a few times as hydration is very important for a successful molting, but otherwise you will want to make sure you are not causing any stress to your jumping spider. This can result in it losing some legs if it jolts during the molting process. Jumping spiders could regrow their legs, though it will be a few molts between that leg is fully functional. But if they're on their last molt, then it will not regrow at all. Handling your jumping spider. So for me, whenever I get my jumping spiders out, I make sure I'm doing it in an area that is very low to the ground or very close to a table in some place that is the opposite color of them so that if they do get away from me, I can see them very easily. I make sure that I'm not doing anything that my jumping spider is not comfortable with and I always make sure I observe its demeanor before I even attempt to get the jumping spider out. A good way for me to tell if it's a day I can handle them or not is if when I walk past they try to run away or hide from me or other days I just kind of sit and they look in my direction to see what I'm up to. And then I know it's a good day and they might want to come out. When I go to handle them, I never force them out of their enclosure. Instead, I just open up the lid to their enclosures and a lot of time they'll just explore right out of it. If you really need them to come out of their enclosure though, you can use a very fluffy paintbrush and very lightly tap the hairs on their bum just to kind of urge them to go in the direction you want them to go into. When handling your jumping spider, you kind of want to follow in a sort of a this pattern as they may jump from hand to hand. They typically will only jump in the direction they are facing, though if they are startled, they will do a surprise backward jump. Same as when I mentioned the paintbrush before, you can use this in an instance where maybe it's running away from you on the table, you need it to kind of come back to you, or you can just place your hand down in front of it and hope that it runs on top of your hand. Just make sure you're placing your hand down from a great distance away as they can be quite quick. They really don't get bonded or trained. They just get comfortable with you over time. They get used to you. They form a sense of security with you and don't perceive you as much of a threat anymore. Jumping spider personalities. I do feel like my jumping spider has a personality, and I feel like all of them are very different from one another. I do not know for sure if personalities is truly something that they do develop and they do have that is individual to them, but for me, all four of my jumpers do not act the same whatsoever. And I do feel like that they have moods. Like I mentioned before, sometimes they'll be a little bit more shy, or some days they just want to stay in their nests all day. If you couldn't find a jumping spider out in the wild, then you can also look online or on social media. There's going to be a lot of adoption sites. You can also visit some reptile or other repticons in your area. When looking online, the typical most common species is going to be the regal jumping spider or the bull jumping spider. You will be able to find other species of jumping spiders, but they may be a little bit more advanced or they could be a little bit more expensive. Typically, jumping spiders may be between as low as $20 to even over $100, depending on that species, age, or even just the individual breeder. Please also keep in mind though that shipping is going to be through FedEx and it should be done overnight. This is a hobby for a lot of jumping spider breeders and they take a lot of time and consideration into their jumpers. The rule that I follow when looking for a breeder online is to make sure they're providing you with as much care information as possible, whether that's in this description, whether they send it to you, or it's just another page on their website. You can also contact the breeder to find out any other information that was not listed on their website or any other questions that you may have. Please remember to follow up with your own research, especially because this is just generalized care and generalized information. A lot of the things that you're going to need to research on is going to be very specific to the gender, the species, and the age that you're going to be getting. You'll want to make sure you're reading on the breeder website, other links, other YouTube videos, so that way you're gathering as much information as possible. Alright, this pretty much wraps up my YouTube video for today. 
Thank you everybody so much again for watching my YouTube video and learning some more information and care about jumping spiders. I hope to see you all again. Please join me next time and also don't forget to check out my Instagram.